You can add graphics, images, and texture to titles. Let me show you how to do that by going to Working Files, Projects, and going on down to 1606 Graphics, Images, Textures. This time we have a light purple solid to use as a backdrop if you want to have that inside the titler. Go down to the New Item button, click that, click on Title. You can give this title a name, you might want to call it Graphics. To add an image or a graphic to a title, you need to go outside the titler up here to the menu bar. I'll pull this down a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. This is the menu bar. It's not connected to the titler. We're going to go title and then go on down here to logo. Using the word logo is a little misleading because you can add any kind of image or graphic file. You can even add a video file and it'll put the first frame of the video here inside the titler. But let's go out and get a logo anyways. Then we'll try out a couple of other things. So go to insert logo, navigate to the working files, other assets folder. Just double click on the Fieldstone farm sign. That brings in this sign at the same size it would be if you put it on the timeline and viewed it over here in the source monitor. But you can change the size. Just click on the selection tool and you get a bounding box around it. You see it kind of extends beyond the frame here a bit. If I start pulling it in like this, it's going to kind of shrink it. It'll distort it. But if you want to constrain the proportions, hold down the shift key and that'll constrain the proportions. It'll maintain the aspect ratio like that. There you go. You can manipulate that the same way you would any other kind of text item. The interesting thing is if you click on one of these styles, it adds the style to that little image. Okay, I'm going to undo this by just deleting it or pressing Ctrl or Command Z a couple times to get rid of that. There you go. Now you can import things other than simply logos or graphics like that. Go back up to Title, Logo, Insert Logo, and double click on the Background Loop MP4 file. This is a video file but it'll bring in the first frame of that video file just like that. It shows up here under Properties Graphic Type right there. If you want to replace it, you can click on this little thumbnail here and replace it with something else, including another video, like so. Interesting how that is. And as long as the bounding box is active, you can move it around, like so, and change the size. You can put it anywhere you want. Now, Unlike when you work with graphics inside Premiere Pro where you're linking to the graphic, in this case, when you bring a graphic into the title, it's actually stored inside the project file as this title, just so you know, it's not linked to it anymore. It's now gonna become part of the project file. I'm gonna click on that and delete that. You can put an image file or graphic file inside a text box. So what I want you to do now is just make some text. So just click on the type tool and make some text here. So let's type in text. I'm going to change it to the default style here and make it really large so you can see what's going on by clicking the selection tool, hovering inside here. That turns on the bounding box, dragging it way up here. We've done this a few times by now, so I think you probably know the drill. Bring it down here. I want to add a logo to this text. The way I do that is by going to the title menu again. Now, the interesting thing will happen. I have a bounding box around this text, but you won't be able to bring in a logo into the text box. I'll show you that. You go title logo, and then you go here, insert logo in the text, but it's grayed out. It's grayed out because you don't have a cursor blinking inside the text box. You need a cursor blinking in here to tell Premiere Pro where you want to put this logo. So now I'm just going to double click in here, get my cursor blinking in there. So now if I go out there to get a graphic or an image file or anything like that, it'll put it right there where that blinking cursor is. So I'm going to go back up to title, go down to logo, this time I'm going to go insert logo into text. I'm going to get this tennis ball here, make it easier. And it puts the tennis ball right in there and makes it as large, relatively speaking, as the text is. I'm going to click here like this, bring it down to more than manageable size here. There you go. And if I want to affect the size of just the tennis ball, I can get my type tool again and select the tennis ball like that. I can adjust its size as if it were a font. Look at this font size, and I can bring it down like that. It behaves like a font in terms of its size. And I can also adjust it to be above the baseline. Let me do a baseline shift here to raise it up like that. There we go. So you can put it in just like that. If I want to give it a style, I can do it down here as well. Give it a style. Just the tennis ball. Deal with the baseline shift yet again. There we go. And if you want to customize the style around your tennis ball, feel free. So that's how you can add a graphic or an image or a logo inside text. And again, it'll be stored inside this title, inside the project file. I want to add some texture to the fill of this text. So I'm going to get rid of the tennis ball by selecting it like that and pressing delete. Off it goes. 
I'm going to move this guy around a little bit again, get it larger again, because I want you to see the texture there inside the letters. Bring this thing up like that. Now, if you look at fill and strokes, there's always going to be a texture option. There's a texture option there for that fill. And if I create a new stroke, there'll be a texture option here for the stroke. Let me start off by adding texture to the fill. I want to use a file that comes with Premiere Pro as my texture rather than use one from the Working Files folder. And to do that, I need to go to wherever Premiere Pro is stored on my hard drive, and you'll need to do the same if you want to do this. Just click on this and track down wherever Adobe Premiere Pro is stored on your hard drive. Here it's stored in Program Files, Adobe, Premiere Pro CS6, and then you want to go to Preset. There it is. And then Textures. Now it says textures, but it's actually full of all kinds of graphics that are used elsewhere in things besides textures. But you can look at some of these things and they can be used as textures. So what I want to do is I want to take this scrapbook background here, this little guy here, I think that'll work fine. Double click on that. And it's going to add it as a texture inside the text. I think it looks really cool to do that. Once it does that, it obliterates whatever kind of color you've got there. It's gone. But you can adjust that. You go down here to texture and you see that it has blending. And you can change the mix from something less than 100%. You begin to see the white come through. If I change it to some other color like green, so you can't really miss that it's there, there's the green coming through. And you can go to negative mix, increase it even more green like that. Negative mix to positive. So like zero is kind of a blend of both. And then negative 100 is the solid color and positive 100 is only the texture. And you can do some other things here. You can open up these other guys in terms of how you scale this, how you position it, and how you contort it, what have you. But you can move it around like that. You can mess with that to your heart's desire. I want to show you how you can do this inside the stroke as well. It's the same kind of a process, but it's kind of interesting to see how it works. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to add texture here to this stroke. And to make it more obvious, I'm going to make the stroke larger. So I'm going to make it larger than 10. There you go. Let's track down a different texture this time. Click on this little button there, and we'll go out and get something a different color here, like this blueprint here. Double click on that, and that adds that texture to the stroke. So that's how you can add graphics, images, and logos to the title. You can also insert those same things to text, and you can apply texture to both the fill and the strokes here inside the title there.